When I started the paintings around the concept of disruption, for me it was this realization that everything that we live today is subject to extreme disruptions. Yeah, also regular disruption. But I think if something, if something is a word is to be used to express the dimension of time that we live today, I think the concept of disruption will be one of the most ominous ones. So for me as the painter that I am, I was subjugated by this idea and I wanted to to paint, to express that idea to my paintings. So obviously I went for the shape of the square and I disrupted that square. I did it in so many different ways and to really see in any of these disruptions the context of colors which are also often used that are very different than the palette of colors that have been using in the past and there's a number of paintings that I did around it some of them are basically squares that I play in motion in a dynamic expression and some are squares in which I introduce visually elements of disruption but this is not innocent it's something that really preoccupies me in all aspects but when most people look at these paintings some of them can see that but most of them don't understand because I did really never express it too publicly so you know, some some say certain things, some say other things, but I wanted to establish the importance of what it meant to me. I was always fascinated by the square. Uh, as a child, when I didn't even know which painter I which, in Paris I was um, often attracted, as a child, to the painting of Albus. For me there was a visual alphabet there that was very simple as a child to understand and moving from shapes of three different colors or variation of the same color on the square it, it was intriguing and I'm taking it I'm saying that you know with all honesty so much so that one day the same gallery that represented my father also represented Albus and Kandinsky and some of the most important artists of our time, the lady who owned the gallery, her name was Denise Ronay, she asked me, Ron, what do you want for your bar mitzvah? So I said to her, I want an albus. So she was laughing, and my father was laughing. And she did give me an albus after. But um, when I started to paint professionally, the square is something that came back to me. And I expressed it in many, many different variations. And I did it in different shades and different colors and different um, illustrations. And I saw a few years ago, I was going into the, to the Metropolitan Museum and I saw there uh, paintings of squares in the exact same context that Frank Stella was painting, but it that person, I think it was a woman, she did it about 50 years before Stella even started to paint like this. Many times people said to me, oh, you look, some of your paintings look like Stella. You know, the look is not the substance. So, so I wanted, uh, again, it's something that bothers me, but I don't really go into the details of argument with some of these people because they are uh, historically they don't really master the terms of what an artist can do and why he's doing what he's doing at the right time that he's doing it. 
and I always almost remember the story of uh, Picasso and uh, Braque in the Cubist periods. It was very difficult to distinguish who was who. Anyhow, this was a small uh, epitaph about uh, Stella and myself. And I, of course, I, l I love Stella's work, and so maybe sometimes it also helped me as an inspiration. But I took it to, the, to another direction, and uh, also the colors that I use and the complexity of some of the squares that I've uh, drawn are uh, really very different than Stella. I'm not saying it's better or, or worse or whatever, but it's uh, it's my view, it's my outlook, it's something that I've done personally. So this is for these uh, people that think some of my paintings look like Stella. Funny. So I come back to this issue of disruption. And you know, many of these paintings that I've been painting lately, I covered them with a thin layer of epoxy resin that increases the saturation of the color and the brightness of the colors as well. I, 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 I came to this many years ago. I was uh, one of my first painting. I was painting it and a friend of mine came. She was, uh, she was, uh, the she was uh, working for uh, Art Basel and she was doing restoration and she's an expert, she's a very nice person, Gloria Villandia. And she's the one who introduced me to epoxy. She said to me at the time there maybe was one artist that she knew that was using epoxy. So my first show, which was uh, nine or ten years ago in a gallery in Chelsea, big gallery, my first show, I had a number of paintings in, in resin with epoxy and it was a very big success. At the time nobody was using this, this epoxy, this resin. Today, you know, like a lot of people are using this resin and stuff. But I, I think that the way I do it is uh, kind of unique and very special. Uh, very different from any, uh, anybody else that's using this resin. But it's a new texture. I mean, it's a new way of treating colors. And it's almost like adding a lens on the on the painting in a way that uh, really makes you know the work uh, kind of different and and interesting, adding a lot of depth to it also. It's almost almost like making the paint alive. Yeah, paint alive. That who would have said that? Something static alive. I mean, organically static. So, yeah, so this is a little bit about these paintings and uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm not an art historian and I'm not an art critic and, you know, these people have a way of expressing things, you know, with uh, academic knowledge, which, uh, which I'm sure it will also happen. But, um, you know, Painters are often, you know, they're cerebral, but they're most into the action. There's something that motivates them to express it in ways that, you know, they it's very personal. And uh, first you do, and then you realize what you do, and then you express it, and then you analyze it. But it's the process can take some time. But for the painter, the soul, the energy, the, you know, the... Uh, the way you find yourself in front of the canvas and the reason why you got there and the way you express yourself in front of the canvas, this is really a very personal thing and very, very often there's a disconnect between the painter and the people that come behind it to justify, cri critique, analyze, you know, write about it. It's. Uh, it's another world, it's uh, something else. But I uh, think, again, the most important for a painter is to be creative and to be honest with himself and to do things that he feels are uh, the expression of the reason of why he's doing certain things. <laughs>